Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue to now talk about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Um, just realized that this, this typo there, that should be, usually it's indicated as Maxwell-Boltzmann, so, because Maxwell first proposed the distribution. In any case, this was the type of uh, distribution of speeds, remember, for gases uh, in a container, right? So remember that uh, we could use the simulation that I've been using to kind of show how that works. This is the distribution of speed. So again, the y-axis is the number of particles that have that speed, and then the x-axis is the speed of uh, the, all each of the different particles that are being plotted right now here as they're moving. If I pause it, of course, then I have a particular distribution uh, in terms of a bar graph, but you can... Uh, what we call smooth this out using a, a, a curve or a plot and that plot is what we call the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Okay, so in this particular video I'm going to start with talking about how that distribution is affected by two things, okay? One is molar mass and the other one is uh, temperature, okay? So you want to uh, write that down. So we want to, you know, look at the simulation, ask the question, what is the effect of changing temperature, first off? And the second thing is, what is the effect of changing molar mass uh, in terms of the distribution of speed, okay? Now, you might want to think about that ahead of time before we actually do this experiment on the simulation. So if you think about it, if I were to increase temperature, okay, in this uh, gas particle, if I were to decrease it, that's, that's the other option, right? Increase or decrease. If I were to decrease it, what, what is it that's going to happen? Okay, based on your understanding of the kinetic molecular theory so far and a couple of the equations that we talked about. What is it going to happen to the, what's going to happen to the gases when I decrease temperature, for example? And that should allow you to predict what's going to happen to this distribution, this plot right here, as I decrease temperature. Okay, so let's do that experiment right now. I'm going to resume this. That's your shape, right? Uh, of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. I'm going to decrease temperature now. So let's see what happens to that curve. As I lower temperature, you see what's going on is what? The curve is slowly shifting to the left, right? Which implies what? We're shifting to the left. Okay, I'm going to pause this again now. Now you see the curve is now here. Earlier it was down here, right? So it's shifting to the left. That's one one uh, thing you you notice. The second thing you notice, of course, the uh, peak is also higher now. There's a lot more particles with this particular speed now, okay? So think about what's going on there, right? When you lower temperature, remember what's temperature uh, doing? Well, when temperature is lower, that implies that the kinetic energy is lower, okay, of the particles. Now, these are all the same particles, so their molar masses are the same. So the only thing that's changing is just the speed, right? And you can see that. As you're going here, you see that these particles are moving a lot more slowly than when I first started, okay, at this temperature, right? So if I go back, this is my original temperature, 275. Things are moving quite a bit faster, but on average, right? But as I lower this down to 37 Kelvin, things are moving a lot more slowly. And that's why you see the shift, okay, of the... Uh, uh, distribution of speed. Things are now the average speed. Now it's a lot lower than before. So then you see this. Um, you see this little uh, uh, shift. Okay, from the right side, the average speed being higher to the left side. Okay. The other thing to notice is that there is uh, more particles at a particular speed. Okay. Earlier when we had it around here, you see that you know, the height is not that, that as high as when you have it at lower speed. So the way you want to think about it, again, it's kind of have an analogy with, you know, cars moving uh, in a particular zone of speed, okay? If you have a range of speed, let's say from 0 to 75, uh, 70 miles per hour, uh, the cars can move any speed, from any speed from 0 to 70 miles per hour. So there's a huge range of speed, so at any particular speed there's probably not a lot of cars there are going at that particular speed but if you reduce that down to zero to let's say 15 miles per hour then you know that most of the cars are going to have um maybe you know uh 
10 miles per hour, 8 miles per hour. So a lot more cars would have that particular speed in comparison to when the speed range is a lot larger. So that's really what we're observing here. As the speed shifts down to a lower speed, you notice that there's a lot more particles that have that particular speed than when we have it at a at a higher speed like here okay you can keep going to a uh, higher and higher speed and you can see that the curve just flattens out a lot more okay and remember what this line represents this line this vertical line here represents your uh, URMS right your velocity your average velocity so as you increase temperature obviously the velocity increases as well okay the average velocity increases as well all right now that's the first effect right it's the effect of temperature so you can clearly see that what happens to the distribution of speed okay but at any temperature you notice that again there's always a dis distribution there's some particles that are really really fast right and there's some particles that are really really slow okay and that's always the case with a distribution with a gas okay you always have this distribution of speed so you shouldn't think of a gas as something that's all have the same speed even though that's the number that we get from the URMS calculation but you should always think about them as having a bunch of different speed distribution and that's important as we'll talk about in a second um, because it allows us to predict uh, speed of reactions okay so the second uh, effect I want to discuss here is the effect of molar mass. What happens to the speed distribution if I were to change this from helium? Okay, so again, helium has this particular curve, right, shape. If I were to change that to neon, for example, okay, so I'm going to pull this back down, and then instead I'm going to change the neon, which is a bigger particle, right? So neon is a big, bigger particle in general, okay? Uh, so again, Compare this, you know, you can pause the video, rewind it a little bit and see what happens. But if you notice, the main difference is that with the helium curve earlier, it was more peaking around this particular part, um, whereas the neon curve is peaking around here. And you can see these are the two RMS speed, right? The RMS speed for neon is a little lower. The RMS speed for helium is higher. That's expected. We know how to calculate those because it depends on molar mass. But you can see that the effect of molar mass is basically that if you have a heavier gas, you're going to have this distribution shift towards the left side with slower speed in general. Okay? Um, and then if you have a lighter gas, right, it's going to shift towards the right side. Okay. Now we're going to go back to our PowerPoint and kind of summarize this information a little bit. Here, here are the two things that we looked at earlier. Okay, again, this is the plot of number of particles um, on the y-axis and then uh, speed on the x-axis. Okay, and here's an example for nitrogen. As you can see here, when we are at lower temperature, like 300 Kelvin, for example, uh, this is the distribution of speed for nitrogen. And as you go higher and higher temperature, uh, let's say up till 1200 Kelvin, for example, the distribution goes shift to the right more and more, higher, higher speed, and there's more particles that have those high speed, okay? But again, at any particular temperature, you always have a distribution. That's really the thing to keep in mind. If you look at the uh, comparison of gases here, it might be a little hard for you to see the labels, but the curve that's the lowest here okay that has the largest distribution of speed is hydrogen that's the lightest uh, gas you can have right only two grams per mole in molar mass and then helium is next okay it's four grams per mole and then you have nitrogen you have oxygen you have chlorine and then you have krypton gas okay so you can see that as the molar mass increases the curve the distribution of the speed is always more and more towards this side now you might ask this question, well, why do we care? Okay, why do we care about this distribution of speed? Why does it matter that we know that there is a distribution of speed for gases? Well, it turns out, and you learn this in Chem 12, or your next semester of chemistry, that temperature is actually a quite important factor in determining how fast a reaction goes, okay? And one of the things that we talked about when we discussed reaction mechanism, which is how fast a reaction goes, the rate of a reaction, is we looked at a particular number called the uh, activation energy. Okay, so let's imagine you have these two different um, 
reactions, okay, in this particular, uh, or two different temperatures, I should say, of the Maxwell distribution plot, okay? So, again, it's number of particles and velocity, and as you can hopefully tell at this point, that the uh, one with the black curve is at lower temperature, right? It's more shifted to the left, and the one for the red is at the higher temperature, okay? And what you can, the idea with the, how this is, becomes applicable to chemical reaction is the following at any particular temperature as you'll uh, at any for any particular reaction I should say as you learn in chem 12 um, there is an energy barrier that the reaction has to overcome in order for the reactants to convert to product that energy barrier is called the activation energy so for example that energy might be here okay that might be the energy barrier that you need to overcome okay express as a uh, uh, you know as a function of velocity in this case okay now as you can see from this plot hopefully it's fairly clear that the area under the curve corresponds to the number of particles that have that particular energy so for the black curve okay for the curve that's black right the number of particles that have that energy is fewer than the number of particles that have energy that have that same energy for the red curve so in other words for the black curve these are the proportion of particles that can have the reaction happen that overcomes that energy barrier. For the red curve, there's a little additional number right here, okay, which is this plus whatever is the black curve is. So in other words, at higher temperature, we expect more reactants to convert the product. The reactions go faster, okay? And that's related to, again, uh, the distribution of molecular speed that's given by Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So that's why it's so important to understand this topic of Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution because later on you can use it to help you explain why some reactions occur faster and why some reactions occur more slowly.